Thank you for listening to the Bayina Institute podcast. Please join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Bayina Institute, or you can join our email list at http bayina.com and share these recordings with your family and friends. إن الحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولقد خلقناكم ثم صورناكم ثم قلنا للملائكة اسجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس لم يكن من الساجدين قال ما منعك ألا تسجد إذ أمرتك قال أنا خير منه خلقتني من نار وخلقته من طين قال فاهبط منها فما يكون لك أن تتكبر فيها فاخرج إنك من الصاغرين رب الشحل صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي واللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله واللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر أمين يا رب العالمين سورة الأعراف its beginning passages are some of the most interesting and beautiful places in the Qur'an. And we learn some very pe- peculiar things and very interesting things about ourselves and the reason for which we were created and the reason for which Allah put us on the earth. A lot of people, they've heard the story of Adam salam and they know, you know the basic details and they tend to believe that we were put on this earth as a punishment. Like Allah when, we, when Adam salam and our mother 
They ate from the tree as punishment, Allah Azza wa Jal sent them down on the earth. But Allah Azza wa Jal in this surah, before He even talks about us coming to the earth or being sent down as a result of that story, because that's mentioned in detail in this surah, before we even get there, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَقَدْ مَكَّنَّاكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعَايِشْ قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ we sent you down, we, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, we settled you in the earth. We gave you a place to stay in the earth. We stabilized you in the earth. We made homes for you in the earth. And we made means for it, in it, for you. وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعَايِشْ Ma'ayish are means by which you can live well. We made means of comfort for you. Allah Azza wa Jalla takes credit for our homes being comfortable. Whether it's back in the day when the Qur'an was revealed, or it's today because of your air conditioning, or your mattresses, or the, you know, the curtains and all the things we enjoy in our home, all of those things Allah Azza wa Jal Himself takes credit for and says, we put all of those luxuries there for you. We, pl- we place those for you. How many people, they, they get their home built? Or they move after they check out all the furniture or the fixing in the, in the kitchen and all the, you know, whether or not there's a garage and whether or not it's automatic door or not, all of this stuff, right? Allah Azza wa Jal says, He put this there for us. And then He adds at the end, قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ How little you think. How little you people care to thank Allah Azza wa If the earth was a punishment, why would we be thanking Allah for punishment? The fact that we have been sent here and Allah demands from us before He even tells us how we got here. Those are the next ayat. Before we even tells us that, He says you have a good life here. You've been given good things here. And I'm, I, Allah Himself is taking credit for that. You've been put in this earth in a very good place. You should be grateful for it. But then Allah Azza wa takes us to the story. And when he takes us to the story, this is one of the most prolonged conversations about Iblis, about Shaitan. Obviously, all of you know that Shaitan has a lot to do with the original story of Adam alayhi salam. And this surah, the seventh surah, deals with that dialogue in some detail. So we learn some very interesting and important things. And all of you know, even though the children here that have heard the story at Sunday school or barely even heard it when they're, you know, Parents play a lecture in the car or something, even they know that shaitan's big problem was arrogance. Shaitan's big problem was that he was full of himself. The ayat even go on to tell us, I won't go ayah by ayah because we have very little time in a khutbah, but at least point by point. Allah Azza wa says, فَمَا يَكُونُ لَكَ أَن تَتَكَبَّرَ فِيهَا It's not becoming of you, it's not appropriate for you to make yourself great here. You can't think of yourself as big here, you can't be arrogant here. Meaning in the company of Allah. Get out of here. فَخْرُجْ إِنَّكَ بِنَ الصَّاغِرِينَ You have been made from those who are little. You are nothing. So he thought of himself as big. And his rationale, when Allah Azza wa Jal asked him, مَا مَنَعَكَ أَن تَشْجُدْ إِذْ أَمَرْتُكْ What forbade you from doing sajda to me when I had commanded you? And the word if here is important. Instead of in, if I commanded you, إِذْ أَمَرْتُكْ At the very second I commanded you, why didn't you make sajda? If he had even taken two seconds later, that still would have been a crime. That would have still been a crime. Some ulama comment, and under this tafsir of this ayah, they quote some other ayat of the Qur'an, like they describe the munafiq, the hypocrite. And they say, وَلَا يَأْتُونَ الصَّلَاةَ إِلَّا وَهُمْ kusala. They don't come to the salat, except that they come lazily. They don't come on time, they come later, and they make salat, they make it very lazily. Here Iblis is, Allah is commanding, not just complaining to Iblis that he didn't make sajda. Allah's complaint is, why didn't you make sajda right away? Immediately. What took you so, I mean, why did it even take long? He didn't even do it. But the problem isn't just not doing it, taking your time and doing it. When Allah commands, you do right away. That's the expectation from Iblis. Is amartuk. And he offers a rationale. And his rationale obviously is based on his, you could in modern day terms call it racism, right? Allah khayru minu, I'm better than him. It's obvious. Look at him. He's made of dirt. You know? Khalaqtani min narin. And notice the ayah. Allah Azza wa Jal tells us, Khalaqtani min narin wa khalaqtahu min tirin. He says, You made me from fire, you made him from dirt. He didn't even mention Adam alayhi salam first. He mentioned himself first. He's so full of himself, he can't even think of anybody else. He thinks of him later. He says, No, 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 you made me from fire. The conversation wasn't about at least. The conversation was about Adam alayhi salam. But he's so arrogant that he can't even help it. خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَارِ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِن طِينِ Then that's when Allah says, you have no right to be arrogant here. Now the interesting thing before I go on, on a tangent, that's not my real subject, on a tangent. He wasn't just arrogant to Allah. I mean when somebody says to somebody else, I am better than you, even today, if somebody says to somebody, I am better than you, or we're better than them, they're being arrogant. 
But they're not being arrogant to Allah, they're being arrogant to somebody else. He never refused to do sajda to Allah. He refused to do sajda to Adam salam by Allah's command. In other words, we shouldn't just think of arrogance as shown to Allah. Arrogance is something that's shown to other creations of Allah. Other creations of Allah. In this case, Iblis showing it to Adam salam. Anyhow, that's again, that's a side note, but an important one nonetheless. What I wanted to highlight today is the, some, some things, some psychological things about arrogance. What does it mean to be arrogant? What does it to mean to be like Iblis? When Allah says he has takabbur in him. In other places he has istikbar in him. He has the want of being great. He has that inside him. What does that even mean? And if that is his biggest problem, well that's the one thing he wants inside of us. That's the one thing that God made Jannah haram on him, forbade him from paradise. Well that's what he would want for us. He would want us not to enter into paradise. So if there's one thing he can put inside us, is the same disease he has. And that is takabbur. So we have to understand this disease a little bit deeper. At least some things about it in this brief khutbah. Essentially, arrogance is when you, in Arabic they call it ananiya, an obsession with yourself. It's essentially an obsession with yourself. Everybody else is secondary, you are primary. The English, the modern American English translation of arrogance would be looking out for number one. That's it, your, your only goal is looking out for yourself. What happens to somebody else, how somebody else feels, what somebody else suffers through, that's not your big problem, that can, you can manage. You need to care, care about yourself. That's essentially what arrogance is. In arrogance, you are insensitive to the needs of others, to the feelings of others. Arrogance can manifest itself when you are trying to take more than your share, because you feel like you deserve more. It doesn't matter if somebody got less, you got yours. That's arrogance. Somebody got appreciated, somebody got praised, somebody got acknowledged. And you're really upset that you didn't get acknowledged. You know? You're sitting there, for example, you volunteered at the masjid and they're making announcements at the program and they're saying, we'd like to thank all of our volunteers, especially Brother Abdullah and Brother Kareem and Brother Hassan. And you sitting there saying, how come they didn't say my name? What's going on? I help so much. They don't even care to say my name? You're obsessed with yourself. And even if your name is said, then you think to yourself, how come my name wasn't mentioned first? Why was it mentioned last? <laughs> That's Iblis. That's what that is. An obsession with yourself. What you want should come first. So what does Iblis do? In this surah, we learn something really powerful. And I want to get to that by the end of this khutbah. But before we do, let's just learn some things about how he spoke with Allah Azza wa Jal. When Allah, when Allah Azza wa Jal gave him this punishment, he said, Qala anzirni ila Give me time. He knows he's punished Allah now, so he, he's, he's, he's rather, ma'adullah, he's disobeyed Allah now, so he deserves to be punished now. So he says, no, no, just give me time, until the day that they are raised once again. Give me time until judgment day. I know I deserve punishment right away, but let me prove a point. You think I'm not good enough? I will prove to you that these guys are not good enough. Just give me time, let me prove it to you. Ila yawmi yub'athun. Allah Azza wa says the challenge is accepted. He accepts the challenge on our behalf. Allah Azza wa in this ayah we learn we have so, Allah has so much confidence in you and me. First of all in human beings and within human beings in the believers. Allah Himself is so confident in us that He accepts the challenge of Iblis. Go ahead, try your best. Inna kamin al You'll be made of those who get time. You will have time to prove your point. And then, the words of Iblis, and by the way, this surah, when it, this surah began, Allah Azza wa described the Qur'an a very particular way. When He said, we sent this book down to you, لِتُنذِرَ بِهِ So we can warn, so the messenger can warn by means of it. So everything we read in this surah, we should think of a warning. When we read, learn anything in this surah, we should be thinking of a warning. It's not just a history lesson of what happened with Iblis so long ago, what happened with Adam alayhi salam. These are all warnings for you and me. He says, فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي the English translation says, because you misled me. Because you misled me. He, he blames Allah for being thrown out of there. He blames Allah for being humiliated. Allah Azza wa humiliated him, and instead of looking at his own fault, he looks at, Allah did this to me. Allah did this to me. This is another sign of arrogance. The first sign of arrogance was you're obsessed with yourself. The second sign of arrogance is, when something goes wrong, you don't blame yourself, you blame somebody else. Even if it means blaming Allah. Why is Allah doing this to me? The thought that I may have done something wrong, 
What have I done to deserve this? What sins have I done? Instead of thinking about myself, I start saying, how come Allah doesn't do me any better? What did I do to deserve this? How come Allah put me in this mess? And people do this not just with Allah Azza wa Jal, they do this with employers, they do this with, with family, you know, you get late to work, and then you start yelling at your wife, how come you didn't wake me up? She never wakes you up. You just do that on your own. But today you're late, so you get angry, and when you get angry, you blame somebody else. You can't take blame yourself, you know? When the project fails, or you're, you're past your deadline, or you're late, or something like that, right? You have to blame somebody else. You can't take blame yourself. You can't take responsibility yourself. And by the way, our messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam was the exact opposite. Even when things were not his fault, he would blame himself. People were not listening to the message of Islam, and he was so terrified for them, and he would blame, maybe I'm not doing enough. Maybe I'm not doing a good job. And Allah Azza wa would tell him, no, 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 you're doing a great job. You keep warning. There's nothing missing in you. That's not your fault, you know. Don't, don't become so frustrated. Even in the beginning of the surah, he blames himself. So Allah says, فَلَا يَكُنْ فِي صَدْرِكَ حَرَجْ When the Qur'an is being revealed and the ayat are being delivered and people aren't listening, you shouldn't get frustrated. It's not your fault. You're doing your job. And what does he do? Please do the exact opposite. He blames Allah. You misled me. You made me slip. But the word ghawa, ghawa in Arabic means to get stuck somewhere after getting lost. To help you visualize that so you remember the meaning of ghawa, imagine that instead of going on the road, you said, I'm going to go off road. And you went off road into the desert. And then your car got stuck in the sand. Now, not only are you lost, you can't even get back. That's ghawa. Iblis says, you made me slip, and I have slipped so far, I can't even come back. And that's a lie too. That is a lie also. When somebody makes a mistake, there's a sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal. We all make mistakes. I make mistakes every day, you make mistakes every day. There's no hiding it, it's not a secret. But when you and I make mistakes, Allah Azza wa Jal does not leave us there. We have the opportunity to make tawbah and get back on track. Except the person who says, Allah did this to me, He got me lost, and Allah has made sure I can never find my way back. It's not my fault, I can't do it anymore. I'm too messed up. That is the attitude of arrogance. You don't want to change yourself, and your own sins, you don't want to blame yourself for them. You decide, Allah has just decided that I'm going to be cursed this way. <coughs> it's too late for me. That's the attitude of Iblis too. We're learning attitudes of Iblis. And he's so angry about that that he lets his anger out not on himself but against those he thinks it's Adam's fault. You see? It's not my fault, it's Adam's fault. So I'm going to come after him and his children. And he promises Allah, لَأَقْعُدَنَّهُمْ صِرَاتَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ It was very interesting language. I will sit waiting for them on your straight path. Now you tell me, if he is already lost, how would he know where the straight path is? <laughs> He just said he got lost, right? But at the same time he admitted that he knows where the straight path is because the believers will go on the straight path and he will attack them on the straight path. So he proved his own lie in his own statement. Your straight path, the one that he's supposed to be on himself, he knows where it is. But he won't go on it. He only, he'll only go close to it to pull the Muslims out. And then he describes to Allah, ثُمَّ لَآتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ I'm going to keep attacking them from right in front of them, from right behind them, from their right and their left. I will come at them from every direction. You know, in, in wartime, if you've ever seen something like that, they show you footage, right? When, when soldiers are traveling on an open road, in wartime, they have to have their guard in every direction. Like the guys carrying the guns, they're pointing their guns in every direction because the attack could come from any direction. We're on the straight path and the attack from Iblis can come from any direction. He says, I'm going to come from wherever I can. And head on, right behind, on either side, I will come at them. And instead of explaining that in detail to you, I'm going to move along and share with you what he said. He doesn't say, I will make, your, I will, I will make these human beings arrogant. Because that was his problem, right? That was his problem. And before this entire passage began, what did Allah say? We put you on this earth, we gave you nice homes, we settled you here, how little you think. Remember those words? How little we're grateful. Now Iblis way back in history promised Allah, 
He promised Allah that when He will mislead people, His goal would be make people so full of themselves that they only think about themselves, they don't think about thanking Allah. وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ shakirin. You will find most of them not to be grateful. You're not going to find that most of them are grateful. To be grateful, you have to think about Allah. And to think about Allah, you have to stop thinking about yourself. You have to give up you know, your, your, your uh, obsession with yourself and replace that with an obsession with Allah Azza wa Jal. You know, you're, you're, not, you're not self-indulged all the time. وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ Now, Allah Azza wa Jal says to him, فَتَأُخْرُجْ مِنْهَا مَذْؤُومًا مَذْحُورًا مَذْؤُوم Actually means الَّذِي لَهُ عَيْب The person who has a flaw in him. He gave his whole speech saying, it's not my fault, it's somebody else's fault. Allah says, it is your fault, you are مَذْؤُوم and you will be taken far away from here. Madhuran. Somebody kicked out. Madhuran. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla tells him, "Laman tabi'aka minhum." I swear to it, whoever follows you among them, among the children of Adam, la amla anna jahannam minkum ajma'in. I will fill hell all of with all of you together. He doesn't say, "I will fulfill hell with you and them." He says, I will fill hell with all of you. In other words, he addressed human beings as though, those who follow him, as though they are one and the same. He addressed shaitan and his followers in one word. You know, ajma'een. The amla anna jahannama min kum. The word kum is used. All of you together. As though there's not even a separation on judgment day. Subhanallah. But the reason I wanted to share all of this with you, not just a, a history lesson, but one particular attack of shaitan, one particular attack of shaitan, that, you know, shaitan attacks us in many ways, and all of us know that. But one of those attacks is so important that Allah actually even mentioned it when Adam was created in this story, alayhi salam. In this story, that attack is mentioned. That's how important and how powerful that attack is. So what is that attack? You all know that Iblis, shaitan, had, done, had whispered to Adam alayhi salam and had done waswasa to Adam alayhi salam and our mother. He had done waswasa. This ayah tells us why did he do waswasa? What did he want to accomplish? What was the goal behind it? So listen carefully because this is warning not just for our parents that have gone, but for us. He says, فَوَسْوَسُ لَهُمَا الشَّيْطَانِ لِيُبْدِيَ لَهُمَا مَا وُورِيَ عَنْهُمَا مِن سَوْآتِهِمَا Shaitan made waswasa. Shaitan whispered to both of them. So he can get them to, so they can expose to each other what was covered of their bodies. Shaitan made waswasa to them to get them to remove their clothes. You would think Shaitan made waswasa to them so they could eat from the tree. That's what you and I are thinking. Shaitan whispered to them so they could eat from the tree. Allah tells us, no, that was just a small part of the plan. His plan was to get their, their clothes removed. I'm going to skip because of a shortage of time and I'll share something with you Allah says at the end of this entire passage. Allah Azza wa says, Ya Bani Adam. He's not talking to Adam anymore. He's talking to all of us, children of Adam. He says, La yaftinannakum shaytan. Don't let shaitan attack you at all. Right now we just read shaitan was attacking our parents. When that history lesson is over, Allah Azza wa turns to us and says, don't let shaitan attack you. And what does he say? Kama akhraja abawaykum min al jannati. Just like he got your parents expelled from Jannah. Just like that, he'll come after you. He doesn't want you to ever go into Jannah. He got them out of Jannah. He wants to make sure you guys never go back. That's what he wants. How, how will he do it? Yanzi'u. Look at these words. Subhanallah. Yanzi'u anhuma libasahuma. He pulls away from them, our parents. He tries to pull away from them their clothes. لِيُرِيَهُمَا سَوْآتِهِمَا So he can expose their shame. So he can expose their shame to one another. إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ He and his tribe are watching you all the time from where you can't even see them. When you think nobody else is around, the shayateen are around. And they're trying to constantly get you to be shameless. That's his strategy. I started this khutbah talking about arrogance. And this khutbah as it's coming to a close is talking about shamelessness. What's the connection between these two things? I want you to leave with something to think about. I told you in the beginning, arrogance is all about being obsessed with yourself. Being obsessed with what you want. Allah told us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He talked about the, the wants of Adam, the wants of the children of Adam. He says, زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ مِنَ النساء. The first thing that was beautified for people was desires for women. Our, our lust, our temptations, our urge, 
And that urge will make someone become shameless. It will make someone become shameless. That is the strongest urge Allah put inside human beings. Shaitan knows that. And shaitan wants that to come out. And the best way to bring that out is for you to remove the clothes. Multi-billion dollar industries. Trillions of dollars of industry dedicated to removing clothes. Fashion industries, movie industries dedicated to removing clothes. Music industries dedicated to removing clothes. To fahsha. He, that's what he wants. That's what he wanted with Adam alayhi salam. That's what he still wants. And our first parents, our, the first parents of humanity, they were the ones who learned this lesson and they started covering themselves. And then look at the irony towards this. In the next ayah, Allah Azza wa tells us, وَإِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً Nowadays when people do wrong, shameless things, you know what they say? قَالُوا وَجَدْنَا عَلَيْهَا أَبَاءَنَا We found our ancestors doing the same thing. We have a history of, this is our tradition. This is how our parties are. That's how we're supposed to do our parties. This is the way we have fashion. What are you talking about? This is, our, this is the way we do things. This is what your fathers were doing? Allah just told you about your original father. He wasn't doing that. That was Adam alayhi salam. What history are you citing? Subhanallah. He exposes the hollowness of that claim. So as I close, I want to share with you that shaitan's most powerful attack is to expose humanity to shamelessness, to get us to remove our clothes, to become indecent in our speech, to, to let our eyes watch something they're not supposed to watch. To expose means to be in front of the eyes. And this is particularly, you would think, I'm talking to Muslims, this is a kafir problem, right? All those kuffar have no shame. That's not true. We are living in this climate. It affects us. It takes its toll on us. When you're living in an environment and you're exposed to it, you know, and it's not even you can escape, you can just go to the Muslim world and you'll be safe. It's not like that. We all, we all have to deal with this very powerful reality. Now it's on your, home, your mobile devices. <clears throat> it's on your TV screens. Young men that are sitting here listening to the, the, this talk, you know what you're up to. You know how you get, it gets the better of you. How shaitan gets the better of you every time. And then you tell yourself, I can't help myself. Allah Azza wa told us we can help ourselves. We're lying to ourselves when we're making excuses. You know? Then you start blaming everybody else. I can't help it bro, it's, you know, it's 2012, what can you do? Yeah, blame everybody else but yourself, right? Blame the environment, blame the elections for your shamelessness. Find something to blame. But don't take responsibility for yourself. SubhanAllah. We have to become people that pull out of the trap of shaitan. And the first step of that is to admit my mistake and you to admit your mistake. Even marriage is not a solution. How many married men that are addicted to filth on the internet? How many? I, I, you know, I don't even know how to respond. I get so many hundreds of emails. So many sisters across the country emailing me, I found out that my husband is expo you know, addicted to filth. I don't know what to do. I don't know who to talk to. Why is this problem happening in Muslim families? In Muslim families. And the fact that you have a beard or you have a kufi on or sisters wearing a hijab is not protection from the waswasa of shaitan. This is not protection from waswasa of shaitan. These things are sunnah, but they're not protection from the waswasa of shaitan. We have to, all of us have to make istighfar. And we have to seek refuge from shaitan. And we have to look out for his attacks. Like I told you, a military you know, uh, you know, uh, regiment is traveling and they're looking for the attack all the time so they can defend. That's why how we have to be with shaitan. We have to guard those things. Because when you open the door a little bit, he sends his armies right in. He sends his armies through. And then you become obsessed with yourself. That desire takes over, and you fulfill that desire, and you get used to fulfilling your desires, and that's only the first step in you becoming obsessed with yourself. And then the only thing left for you then is, a, is complete arrogance. Complete obsession with yourself. That's what arrogance is. And that's all he wanted. So his foot in the door for us is, is fahsha. That's his foot in the door. He will use that urge that Allah Azza wa Jal gave us. In and of itself, it's not an evil urge. It's something Allah Himself beautified. It's, it's something Allah beautified. For men to find women beautiful, it's something Allah did. It's, Allah put that inside us. He told us that Himself in Al-Imran. But to control it, that's something Allah gave us too. That's something Allah gave us too. And shaitan wants it to be out of control. Hunger is something Allah gave us. We have, a, we have hunger, we have desire for food. But Allah told us, here's some lines, don't cross these lines. Uh, and I conclude with this, folks. Adam alayhi salam was told, have all of Jannah, take it. Just stay away from one tree. 
We are told, have this world, take it. Here are a few things that are haram for you, stay away from them. The rest of this world you can enjoy. Have fun. It's a good life for you. I've made beautiful life for you. You should be grateful for the life I gave you. In the same ayah, he's pulling us away from fahsha. He's telling us life is beautiful. And we're learning from that. Then when we truly learn to get away from fahsha, then we will find a beautiful life in our family, as individuals, as families, and even as communities. Life is going to become beautiful. Life is going to be a different thing. May Allah Azza wa Jal help us instill the values of shame and values of guarding ourselves and dressing decently and instilling those values into our children and putting a love of dressing decently into our children and our families. May Allah Azza wa Jal make it easier and easier for us to cover ourselves and make the effort to cover ourselves just like Adam and our mother, alayhi masatu wasalam, Hawa, alayhi masatu wasalam, made the effort to cover themselves the moment they were exposed. They covered themselves layer after layer. Tafiqa yaksifani alayhi ma min waraqil jannah. They kept covering themselves layer after layer. If you put one layer of clothes on top, you're covered. But tafiqa means one over the other, one over the other. They kept doing it, you know, because they were so worried that I don't want to be exposed again. May Allah put that sentiment inside of us. May Allah Azza wa Jal remove from our youth the idea that the way people dress, that have no respect for themselves, that have no belief in Allah, that have no fear of Allah in the Akhirah, who's, uh, who's been hypnotized by shaitan, and that leads them to dress a certain way, and talk a certain way, and sing a certain way, and watch certain things. May Allah not li- li- let those things look beautiful to us. Because once those things look beautiful to us, then zuyina lahum, you know, lahum shaitan a'malahum has become true on us. Shaitan beautified de- their deeds to them. We don't want, we want Allah to beautify things for us, not shaitan. We don't want to become followers of shaitan. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect us and our families and the entire ummah from the waswasa of shaitan and make us the people that warn the rest of humanity against the waswasa of shaitan. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقل الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتاً